Remember guys, subscribe to the channel. When you hit the sub box, make sure you hit the notification bell next to it and press this chat box to send you all notifications to this channel so you can guys get the notification squad to let you guys know that I'm posting a video on my channel. Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new video where I'm going to be talking about Tom's Clancy Ghost Recon Wildlands. Remember to leave a like on this video if you really enjoy it. Let's get at least 5 to 10 likes on this video and let's continue on talking about this game. Now some of you who enjoyed the live stream, thank you so much for joining the live stream. I had like 200 views on that stream with trying to get out the beta keys and that was the issue that I want to talk about with Ubisoft in these past open or closed betas that hasn't been a real success for them but a lot of people said at the end of the day that had fun with the closed and open betas now with the beta keys it was very difficult to gain the beta keys to the lucky winners or to the lucky subscribers that couldn't get the beta keys and i truly truly apologize with that it's just that i didn't want you guys to go through this issue with the beta keys you had to go through ubisoft Add me as a friend on their website, I guess join like their Ubisoft club and you guys would get the beta keys. And some people don't really like that. Some people don't want to join like a club of, from a developer to get some stupid beta key that they probably won't even get the game in the end. But skip all that. That was an issue that was going on with Ubisoft that needed to fix. The next thing I want to talk about in this video is their server issues. And I had a lot of server issues. Not with Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. I had an issue with their For Honor open beta. And that was their problem. Their servers were really need some fixing. I don't know if a lot of people, there was a lot of traffic uh, in the open beta or the closed beta. That was some problems for, you know, Ubisoft servers. I had the issue with For Honor and I couldn't really show you guys the live stream of For Honor because the server issues were just terrible at this point. So that's the number one issue that they need to fix with For Honor and Tom Clancy's uh, Ghost Recon to make sure during launch day they don't have a server issue um, during when it comes to launch day. As you can see in the gameplay right now, I was trying to get the helicopter, but my dumb ass didn't it went too much in scoping. Now let's get in on to the real gameplay and talk about um, Ghost Recon. Now this is going to be a long video. This is going to be a, at least maybe a 20 minute video. So bear with me. There was so much things you can do in this game. And it's really worth it $60. And that much I really much appreciate. And I have fun with this game. The gameplay was good. The, the guns, the customization of each character, the weapons and all those styles were fantastic at this point. And getting the skill points were pretty easy in this game. And setting up the skills for each thing like your drone, your weapon, your Itself, everything that I have and of course the whole open worldness of the game was very good and this even giving skill points to even help your squad out now I understand that was the, just the closed beta and the squad wasn't the best squad it's best to play with uh, co-op players to kind of help you out through the missions you guys on headsets and you guys go through like the jungles of Bolivia and just go crazy and take out this crazy ass cartel that's just taking over the country so it's best to play with the co-op people than your alpha than alpha than your um than your AI players because sometimes your AI players do the complete opposite if you never know it's about AI players their enemy is like right in front of their faces and they're just walking past the enemy and you're just like how the hell that happened with your AI if that was me I would have got like 10 bullets in my ass if I walked past his ass so the AIs in games nowadays are not the best reliance to do anything like that as you can see right now on the screen as you can see it's just the whole skill base of everything Thing. So just bear with me. Like I said, it's gonna be a long video and I'm just showing you guys everything that you can do to really update your player. Of course, the physical of your player like stamina, health bar, anything in that sense. All those skills points go towards your player. And there was another interesting thing. There was even skill points to update you when it comes to weapons. So that if you're like a good sniper, but your hand is shaking, there was even skill points for that to help you out there in that situation. So that was really good for them to really do that. That every skill point that they have, it goes towards everything you could possibly can think of. And that was really good. As you can see in the screen right now, I was looking at the physicality of everything. So that was pretty interesting for you guys to look at. Even the items, um, the drone, even the drone gets a skill point. Because during the uh, close beta, your drone didn't have it. 
too much things to do. It couldn't do everything that it could possibly can. And that was the interesting part about this game, that everything that you're doing is not going to necessarily help you if you don't get skill points for each thing. And your drone gets skill points. Like sometimes your drone might not have the night vision. You had to get like a skill point for that. And the skill points, technically it's the little side missions in the map that you had to get to do the skill points. So yes, you will get skill points from like the main missions, but the side missions is the necessary ways to get the skill points. So that was really interesting to know that even the side missions, you can do that to get more skill points and the missions that you do, you can get skill points from there. But the overall aspect to get all those skill points that you need, especially for your drone, your weapons, your physicality and your squad, you had to do side missions that you had to do. Like in the first part of the video when I was trying to get the helicopter, that was a skill point. That was a skill point to help me in my physicality and a skill point to help my squad out. So you had to do side missions to get those uh, skill points. If you didn't know that, that's what you have to do. But it was really interesting, the skill point map and the assets of the game and going into the menu was very easy. That was one thing about Ubisoft when it comes to like these co-op and multiplayer games or these kind of like open world games. The menu is very easy. As you guys kind of know, it's like in Call of Duty Infinity Warfare, that's where a lot of people were complaining about the whole menu thing. You go into the menu and it's just like, what the hell is this? I'm talking about the, uh, what's it called? The multiplayer one. You go in there, you don't even know how to upgrade your weapon. You don't know how to go to the quartermaster. You don't know how to do none of this stuff. But in Ubisoft, it was very very easy to find everything that you needed to get. There was a tab for customize your character or there's a tab to update, you know, your skill points. And there's a tab for your weapon vaults. And it gives you like your gunsmith and put in that sense. It gives you everything in details about which weapon is best, which has a better accuracy, which is better science, or which is better this, which is better that. And it gives you a whole list of weapons that you can get. Now, during the side missions, in the side missions, you can get those special weapons. And in the map, it will tell you there's a weapon in this area that you need to get. It will directly show you where to get this weapon. And the cool part about it is you can update every part of your weapon. And that's what's so cool about this game. It kind of reminds me of a little bit of Division a little bit. But with the vision, they give you skins that kind of just give you overall of the um, of the weapon. But here in Tom Classy's Ghost Recon, if you want to do like a camouflage with your with your whole weapon, but your scope is not that same color, you can go in there and change the scope of the color. And that was really easy. And that's what the reason why I like Tom Classy's Ghost Recon Wildlands because the map menu and the tab section was very easy to do and just get in there and just go from there. In this part of the video, I was just kind of messing around like you had to go into the internet and all that stuff. So we just skipped that part. But the whole tab menu was great. And I like how they give you like the whole aspect of your character right in the menu slot. It shows your full details of your character, the weapons that he's using, the gears that he's using and all that cool stuff. And that was really amazing. In my last video, I was showing you guys my full customization of each character. So when you do get the game on opening on opening day or on, on day of the release, you guys will know which, you know, stuff you want to get for your character. So you don't have to go through all that crap. So that's why I kind of post that video out there to show you guys what all the necessary things you can get. And it was really cool. It doesn't matter what weapon it is. It could be a side weapon. It can be your primary weapon. Everything gets camouflaged. And that was the cool part about this. And I loved it. The drone, unfortunately, don't get camouflaged like how it is in Watch Dogs. You give it like a nice skin tone. But you can even update it and put explosives on there. In this next slide, I was showing you guys the enemies that you have to go against in this game. Now you have yourself, which is your operation. You're, you're called ghosts. You're a ghost operation. You're going down here and trying to take out the bad guys. Then you have the rebels. Then you have the cartel. And then you have the forces. If you kind of notice, it kind of reminds you of the divisions, enemies, where, you know, there's yourself. And then you have like the, you know, the little gang kids that, you know, just non-citizens. Then you have the prisoners who are like the cartel. And then you have the last man in Stanley Battaglia who's like the forces in the game. So they kind of give you that kind of sense of how the vision is, but a little bit more darker and twisted twists. The map, now a lot of people are trying to figure out how big is the map. Judging by it, the map looks pretty big. And they're trying to compare it with the GTA map, 
you know, Watch Dogs map or, you know, all those videos that you see on YouTube of people comparing which map is bigger, which map would give you a better aspect. And on this map, it kind of reminds me of a little bit of Far Cry Primal a little bit of the map details. I don't know if you guys kind of notice, the mapping kind of reminds me of Far Cry Primal and it kind of reminds me of For Honor a little bit. The mapping is, it looks pretty decent, it looks pretty big. So that's one thing about Ubisoft, they usually have good maps and their maps are pretty large. So that's a really cool thing about Ubisoft, their maps are really big. And as you can see, I've been showing you right here, the side missions where you get the skill points to do those, to kind of upgrade yourself or update your drone, that's where you get it from, the like, little side missions and all that stuff. In this video, I was just doing like random missions in there and basically doing like random skill points that kind of help me out and boost my character up. Now, a lot of people are wondering, can you transfer those things towards, you know, the opening of the release? Yes, usually at, when I was playing Division as a closed beta, most of my character and my process of the missions were carry over. Now there's an opportunity you can, you know, just start a new mission if you want to. Now in this video, I was testing out the drone and all that stuff and the silencers and all that cool stuff. Now the drone kind of tags everything. Don't tax everything. The the only thing you can, it, it tags everything is the skill points. So it's definitely to work on your skill points so it can help out your drones and all that stuff. Flying the drone was pretty easy. You know, it was just like how it is in Watch Dogs 2, but it's just like in the first person while the Watch Dogs 2 drone was in third person. So it was a little bit different than, you know, Watch Dogs, but you'll get used to it. And it tags mostly the enemies. It don't tag every enemy. The only reason why it didn't tag every enemy is because of the battery life and, of course, the Wi-Fi. And everybody knows how drones are. If you get them out of range, <laughs> it don't fly too much. So that's the only reason why they don't tag as much characters. And as you can see, I was messing around with the night vision. Right here wasn't at night, but I give you a kind of sense of how the night vision will work in at night. So it's all in details. I can see at the bottom of your screen is the battery life. Make sure that you have good, decent battery life. And make sure that you get those skill points to help out your battery life. And the good thing about the drone, you can direct your team to go here or shoot out or do this or do that. So you have everything in your command to do that with your with your AIs. Now, as you can see with Ubisoft's videos, they did that too. He was playing with his AIs. He was commanding them to start shooting or do this or do that. As you can see, I was walking up with my silencer. Now, a lot of people said that's pretty damn easy. Now it is. Make sure you shoot well, <laughs> okay? Don't miss the target because if you miss the target, he's going to notice that you there there's been a couple of times where when i was playing this mission i got i got seen so that's one thing about um this game it's really fun the overall concept is really good a lot of people said they didn't had fun with this game or anything in that sense um they don't like it or don't like this they said the same thing about the vision it didn't even said the same thing about for honor they didn't even like it they didn't even give the game a chance and then when they noticed that everybody's playing it and they're having fun they're getting all this cool gear they started to come on i felt the same way with far cry primal when it first came out I'm like this is not really far cry this is not their setting but at the end of the day when you played it it was really fun and I think that's how like Call of Duty and most of these games like No Man's Sky and all this stuff, they didn't talk about much about the game and I thought that people were going to actually like this, but when they got the game, it wasn't fun at all. And that's the sucky part. Now, when you're holding the weapon, you're trying to scope, you're going to be in third person and in first person. But when you're not in scoping, you're not in, you know, shooting mode, you're going to be in third person. So that's really cool about Ubisoft, how they did this game. Like when you're in, you know, combat mode, you're in first person. When you're non-combat, you're going to be in third person. So that was really good how they do this thing. Next is the driving. A lot of people always talk about Ubisoft driving. Their developers don't have the best driving capability like GTA. And we noticed that with um Watch, with Watch Dogs, the first Watch Dogs game, the driving was completely horrible so their driving stability is pretty pretty good i like it now in this next mission i was trying to get another skill point this is a medical skill point and this will help you through your stamina and all that good sense now a lot of people said can they use camouflage from their customization to kind of help them in their situation yes there's camouflages where you can hide in the bushes be like a little bushy little thing and hide in the bushes and go from there so that can definitely help you out in those situations and me and i was trying to you know just be sneaky as possible when I'm trying to take out the enemy because my AIs are not the best AIs. Now, if you see in most videos like Ubisoft's videos, 
their AI is going to be top notch and they're going to be having fun with their AIs. So that was the, the, you know, the misconceptions about how Ubisoft do theirs and when the AI that you got in close beta are not like, well, this is not how it is when Ubisoft play it. Their Ubisoft, you know, their ones is going to be a little bit more skill and more high level than ours because we have to work on ours. And me, I was just scoping out and as you can see, the drone was tagging me and I know I had like three more teammates, so I don't know where the hell he went. I think in this part of the video, he was like literally in front of the enemy. As you can see, he's like right there and the enemy was at the gate and I'm surprised that the enemy didn't see him standing there and I was like dude what the hell are you doing so that's the only difference about your AI that will spot your ass now in co-op I don't know how that will happen in co-op will the co-op um, be spotted by the enemy so that's the only difference about this game will the co-op in the AI in the AI be similar well of course not because your co-op team will not be standing in front of there with the enemy at the gate so the drone does help you out as you can see the battery life is completely dead and so that was the only sucky part about the drone that you don't have that much battery life and you had to get skill points to boost up the battery life of this game now i'm running through the field trying to like you know get through an entrance and that's something really cool about this game like there's so many aspects you can do in this game that can help you out now in this situation with the helicopter so many enemies will go in the helicopter and take it somewhere else so for that situation i will go in silence as deeply as possible try not to basically you know let them know that you're there and as you can see i was picking up skill points and medals to kind of help me out in those situations so watch out for those and as you see i was spotted right there and i took the enemy out really quickly and unfortunately it notified the rest of the enemies and i want to take them out as quickly as possible because in the first part of the video as you can see the enemy took the planes so your enemies in this game can be very vigilant and a lot of people say oh, well they're ai's how they can be very vigilant in this game that usually what happens the enemy ai's are more skilled than your you know co-op players or your AI players. So I don't know how that happens, but it does. And I try to take out the enemy as much as I can. Um, now, the drone didn't catch every enemy. As you can see right there, there was an enemy right there. It didn't catch any enemy. So in these skill points, I can see, as you can see, there was an enemy right there. The skill points are the green little things right there. These will help you in your skill points. Make sure you pay attention to your surroundings so you can get every skill point as you could possibly can. As you can see, I was just looking everywhere that can possibly help me to help my out skill points. I can see there's one that that's a medical skill point that will help me out for medical purposes of myself, like boost up my stamina or my physicality or anything in that nature. And I'm trying to, as you can see right here, I'm trying to figure out which one is going to be the best one for me to use in this game. Now, right now, this is the part of the video that is getting really interesting. It's the flying of the planes. Now, the planes is not the best flying capability in the game it's i'm trying to get used to it at this point at this point in time it wasn't really the best aspect of the game now the driving is good the driving's really fine it rides smoothly it goes very smoothly but the flying part of the game i had a little problem with the the controls of it was really was really a problem and during this flying mode your ai's can tell you look there's an enemy here there's an enemy there there's a cartel truck going this way and you and your ai's can basically fight them in the air so that was really cool about this game it's such an open world concept there's many ways you can attack the enemy you can attack the enemy by driving you can attack the enemy on the boots you can even attack the enemy by flying or driving a boat in this game so that was really cool. Now the flying, I still gotta go have a little more practice once the game comes out, and that's gonna be my only problem in this game. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys feel about this game. Is this gonna be a real good open concept of Ubisoft? And do you think this was a good game or better game than The Division if you played The Division any time in your lifetime? Because a lot of people said The Division was kind of weak and it gets boring. But I say at least to have DLCs that you know people can play in the end unfortunately for destiny it was a really cool game but at the end of the day it gets boring after a while and there's no dlcs for the game to play 
So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about the open world concept for games nowadays. And do you think that's the future of gaming or they need to just go back to natural gaming where it's not open world concept and just mostly strictly battle. Let me know in the comment section down below or we'll start a conversation like that. My name is Short by Nature and I will see you guys in my next post.